Hey, we got people that are watching online, Egg Harbor Township and Summers Point. Let's put our hands together and let's uh, celebrate them. And then, yes, yeah, someone came up to me this week, doesn't attend church, doesn't even show up uh, to any of our gatherings. But they were like, hey, we listen to the podcasts. And so we are reaching people far from Jesus. We are equipping Christ followers and we are going to all the nations. And that means across the street here in southern New Jersey and the region. So come on, let's pray as we dig into today's message. Father, what grace you have given us. Lord, I've just heard from our campus pastors, worship was just powerful, powerful both at both locations. And so I pray that that word of worship has really laid a foundation for what you're going to do in this next period of time. And we pray this and we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, hey, we got some good news. I want to announce this before we dig into today's message, part three of asking for a friend. Pastor Steve Evans knocked it out of the park last week talking about the greatest relationship. So good. And then honestly, like three weeks ago, help, I'm surrounded by crazy people. I've used, I preached that message and I've used it multiple times already. I'm like, I'm surrounded by crazies just every way I go. So just really good practical things. But we announced a few weeks ago that, hey, Cumberland County, Vineland, Millville, we are coming for you. We want to announce next Sunday, we are having an interest meeting at our Egg Harbor Township location after the third service. Because God is on the move. And we were up in the Cumberland County uh, area this last Wednesday with the elders of our church. And we were praying. We were listening to what God is saying. And we have all kind of unanimously agreed God is moving. And we better hurry up and follow God because He's on the move. How many of us know that's a good thing when God's moving and you've got to hurry up because he's moving, because no, no, no slow pokes needed in the kingdom of God, correct? And so join us, if you're from that area, join us next Sunday, uh, right after the third service at our Egg Harbor Township location. But I got, I got a question as we jump into today's uh, message titled, Asking for a Friend, I Need a Benjamin. I need some money. A- a- has someone ever asked you for some money? In fact, uh, back in the day when I was a youth pastor in Long Island, we had this one youth leader that whenever we got to Checkers, anyone remember Checkers, you know, like, you know, Checkers, the, um, you know, fast food takeout place, there was this one Checkers in a really rough part of town, but we had to drop some kids off, and so we ended up always hitting up this Checkers, and that youth leader was the guy you didn't want to drive in the car with, because as soon as you got through the drive through the bro was like... I think I forgot my wallet. Well, after the fourth time, I'm like, bro, we got a problem over here. And he was always like, can I, can I have a Benjamin? Can I, like, can I get some money? I'm like, after, I mean, the first time, I love you. The second time, there's grace. Third time, grace. Fourth time, I'm like, I'm done. No more youth leader, no more driving you. So every time he would want to go with us, or everyone that was driving was like, he ain't going with me. He, I mean, if he called shotgun, no one got the front seat with that guy. Everyone went with someone else. And so uh, here's the question I want to propose to you today. Uh, do you need a hundred grand or do you need God? Think about it. 100 grand or God. Now, before we give the church answer, because we're in church or you're engaging with us online at our online campuses, um, let, let's be honest. If I came with a briefcase and opened it up, like they do in the movies, and gave you 100 grand or God, what would you choose? And think about it. Yeah, think about it. Some of us would go, yeah, 100 grand and I'll get God later. And some of us that have been walking with God for a long time would go, that hundred grand is going to come and go, but peace, healing, salvation, vision, grace, mercy in our lives, that never goes because God is eternal. He's the beginning and the end. But, but if we had to take God out of the equation and just keep the hundred grand this, today, how many of us would go, I need a hundred grand right now? How many of us, any, any honest people there? there we, oh yeah, okay. I've got a hundred grand for you. <laughs> I got the 100 grand candy bar, baby. Right there, that is yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy those 180 calories that come with the 100 grand over there. But correct? How many of us would go 100 grand or God? And, uh, and one of my responsibilities as the lead pastor of the church is to spend time praying and hearing from God. 
God, what are you speaking to us? Henry Ford said, if he had given man what he wanted, he would have given him a faster horse. But he gave us an automobile. And many times my responsibility is to hear from God. And, and recently in prayer, during this Asking for a Friend series, I was, I was praying and saying, God, what do you want to speak about? And, and I felt the Lord kind of download the what of what we're going to talk about in Asking for a Benjamin. The what is, I think in the upcoming weeks, and if not already, I think there's going to be a lot of emotional spending happening going into Christmas and the new year. And the emotional spending is going to happen because we've had a hard 2020. I mean, just look, people are putting up Christmas d- decorations before uh, they've done. Usually people have got trees before they've normally done. You're listening to Christmas music. I mean, come on, some of you are drinking eggnog already. And I think it's sin to drink eggnog, period, period. <laughs> Growing up in South Africa, I never had eggnog. And the first Christmas here, I was like, what is that awful stuff? And so there's emotional spending. It's the what, why, because we've gone through a rough time and how do we get through rough things? We normally do things emotionally. And yet here's the reality. Anything done in emotion that is not led by the Spirit of God equals pain. Think about that. Maybe some of us got to write that down real quick. Anything done in emotion. Think about a relationship. Think about a purchase. Think about a decision in your family. Anything done in emotion that's not led by the Spirit of God equals pain within our life. And there's, let's be honest, there's been a lot of pain in the last year in multiple different fronts of our lives. And, and we're in this place of like, well, my kids deserve it. Well, I deserve it. I deserve this X as we go into this Christmas season. Now, that's the what. Let's talk about the why. The why is this. Being crushed, the why, being crushed under financial pressure is not God's best for your life or my life. God's best is not that we live in constant pain. God's best is not that we live under constant pressure. And I know some of you are crazy enough to go, I like pressure. No, that's not God's plan for your life to live under constant pressure regardless of what it is. And so transparency coming from my side, I didn't grow up with a good financial model. My my dad and my mom were horrendous at finances. Uh, There was a lot of pain in my life. How much pain? Uh, There was one season in my life as as a teenager, my family moved seven times in five years due to financial pressure. Seven times in five years, my, my family had to move. My mom had to move. My dad had to move. This was Southern Africa. It was countries, different countries, Mozambique, Botswana, uh, South Africa that we were moving back and forth from. And when I came to the United States on June 13th of 2000, many of you have heard the story, but I arrived with 25 cents, a quarter in my pocket. 25 cents is how I started 20 years ago. And so in the last 20 years, I've learned a thing or two about stewardship, about God's biblical understanding uh, of the Word of God in regards to finances. In fact, the Bible talks many times more about finances than it does about anything else. Why? Because money is something that's really important to us as human beings in this culture that that we live in. And and my father-in-law, who had hired me, I ended up marrying his oldest daughter, Pastor Danielle, uh, it taught me much of what I would know today about budgeting and about balancing a checkbook and about tithing. Tithing is 10% that we give to God so we can trust Him with the rest. And, and we're going to kind of flesh this out over the next period of time simply because of this. This is because I don't want you to have the same pain that I've had in my life. I, I pray that you, as you lead your families, would not have the pain that I've endured or you would begin a season and a journey to healing. And so today, as we talk about steps, to stop the pain within our life? Can I just say, I think there's one major step as I sit down and talk with people. And this is it, build a budget. Let's say that together, build a budget. And and some of us would give me the look like, duh, pastor. And yet the reality is, as I sit down with people and as I would say, talk to me about your budget, we don't have a budget. Or we've got a pretend budget. Or we've got a budget on a spreadsheet on a computer that doesn't even work anymore. You get what I'm trying to say? Like the reality is we don't have a budget. And Christmas is coming. In fact, Christmas is not a surprise. Christmas happens the same time every single year. 
December 21st. In fact, I know because my birthday is December 30th and everyone's always broke when they get to my birthday growing up as a kid. I was like, this is the worst birthday of my life. In fact, I prayed at one point for God to change my birthday to July. If I could have a birthday in July, somehow my life would be... Any other December babies, you feel my pain over here? There we go. I mean, if you're at the beginning of December, well, we don't have money to spend on you because we're trying to save up for Christmas. Then you spend all your money on Christmas. Yes, I go to counseling for this kind of stuff. But, but Easter, you know, Easter is funny because Easter changes every year. I mean, that, that's like a moving target. So the, we've already started planning for Easter here at, at the church. And so Easter is the beginning of April, but sometimes it's the end of April. And then there's those crazy years it's the end of March, you literally get through Christmas and you're like, ha, Easter is over here. But Christmas, Christmas is always at the same time. And and, and so uh, as we talk about a budget, some of us are like, how does this even align with the Bible? Well, thank you so much for asking that question. It's found in John chapter 3, verse 16. And in John 3, verse 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. See, God himself had a budget. You know what his budget was? One. You know what his budget was? His son. You know what his budget was? I'm going to release my son so that you could have life and abundant life. In fact, uh, in the book of Luke, in the New Testament of the Bible, Luke was a physician, a doctor, man. He loved the details. And Luke says the following. He says, for which of you, desiring to build a tower, live life, does not first sit down. And what are those words? Count the cost. What are those words? Count the cost. Come on, one more time. What are those words? Count the cost. Okay, real loud. I want to hear Summers Point, EHD, and online. You ready? One, two, three. Count the cost, okay, whether he has enough to complete it. Is there enough in the budget? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all of who see it begin to mock him. They put stuff on social media about them, crazy pictures, dislikes, saying this man has began to build and do something that he was not able to finish. Luke is saying, we've got to have a budget. Are we able to do what we are expecting to do within our life? It's like this last Wednesday. We were having our monthly elders meeting here at the church, and, and we got in a car, or cars, plural, and we drove up to the Vineland Millville area. We drove through the towns. We looked at different locations. We continued to pray. These are discussions that we've been ha- having as, as Fusion has additional rooms. Egg Harbor Township is a room. Summers Point, you're a room. Online, you're a room. God's opening this Cumberland County room for us. And we feel that God's going, listen, I'm opening the room whether you're choosing to come or not. And so as elders, we were there counting the cost. What's it going to cost to be able to do this? Uh, you heard today, 120 plus dream teamers involved in our children's ministry. Come on, that is incredible right there. Why? That's larger than the average church in the United States of America that is serving our children. 75 to 85 is the average size church. But guess what? There is a cost to making sure that we are raising our children with biblical values. And yet, I'm amazed at the amount of people, Christ followers, Christians, disciples, that do not have a budget and the pain that finances bring. In fact, the four values that we have at Fusion Church is we want to have a healthy faith. We want to have a healthy freedom. We want to have healthy family, whether it's one or more. And we want to have healthy finances. It's the areas and the values that we seek to grow into. In fact, if you've got your app available, right there is different links. One's the uh, DaveRamsey.com, budgeting, how to budget, okay? And, and many times people go, Pastor, that's great talking about a budget, but what does it mean to budget? So glad you asked the question. Step number one, here it is, write it down. Write down your total income. Duh, like write down your total income. God said, I've got a total of one son that I'm going to give. Luke said, listen, count the cost. Well, the cost, you've got to know what's the total that you have to work with. And so even as you're looking at Christmas right now, what's the total that you have to look? As you begin to pray about 2021, what's the total 
that you have to work with. And listen, I know here at now churches that we serve, many of you are going, man, my total has gone down in 2020 because of COVID and layoffs and furloughs. It's gone down. Well, can I just say here at Fusion Church, we've written down our total and then we've designated a portion of that total to be able to help people in our community. So if you're here today at one of our locations and you would go, man, I need food. I I need help with a bill. I I need a need or a necessity. We would love to be able to help you today. In fact, at the end of the service, just come to our prayer team and they're ready to help you today. They'll take your information and we'll get it into one of our teams to be able to help you in this season. Now, there's some of us that, man, God has blessed you in 2020. In fact, many people have come and said, man, I want to sow good seed into fusion in the end of this year. And I want to say, man, Cumberland County, uh, Vine the Mill, well, that's good seed. And we're going to give you information in the next few weeks of how to do that. But, but to write down, write down everything that's coming in. Because I've realized in Brendan's life, there is seed. Seed is coming in. My dad, again, was a farmer. But, but when seed comes in, I have two choices. Maybe you want to write this down in your notes. Choice number one is to eat my seed, Okay. Choice number two is to sow the seed. So what's choice number one? Eat the seed. Yeah. Someone's point. What's choice number two? Sow the seed. Egg Harbor Harbor Township. What? Sow the seed. Okay. So I can eat the seed or I can sow the seed. Now, you've got to eat so you can live, but you want to sow so you can keep on living. Does that make sense to some of us? So step number one, write down that total income that God is continuing to bless you with. Number two, this is where the fun begins. List your expenses. And when I say list your expenses, I mean everything. Everything. Men, that is the Home Depot visit where you get some beef jerky on the side. You know who I'm talking about. I saw you recently. Ladies, that's the Target visit where you go to the one aisle that just you can't resist, and it was like, honey, I really needed that millionth candle in the house. It smelled so good. What, what does the Bible say? The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The context of that scripture is talking about Jesus. He is the light, and darkness is the enemy of our souls. But the principle is, when I shine a light on it, there is revelation that comes within my life. Now, listen, hey, I, 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 I got to be transparent today. Uh, my wife, Danielle, she is the boss at budgeting, okay? Uh, I'm average. I'm pretty decent. I'm a good steward. But, but girlfriend that I'm married to, she is the boss. And, and we've got spreadsheets, and she's got multiple tabs, and we're like three years out on some budgeting. And, I mean, and, you know, she's like, well, you need to service your car, so we might as well plan for it. You need tires, so we might as well plan for it. You need emergency this and emergency that. But, but at the end of the day, when we talk about listing your expenses, she writes it down in these little books. And in our house, we have these little books all over the place. So when you give us those like free little books, guess what they become in the Wilson house? Budgeting books. And in the budgeting book, oh, why did I open this one? This is my budget right here. Starbucks. She's Dunkin' Donuts and I'm Starbucks. And uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about this right here. But somebody said, she will go, uh, you went over your budget. And she will write down exactly what is in my store. And uh, it's not, I, I, I drink black Starbucks or whatever it is. It's not that other uh, fruit-free stuff. But there's Wawa in here. There's Oli's in here. There's Walmart in here. Um, there's, you know, BJ's is in here. I mean, there's gas in here. Every, we write down everything. And can I just say, here's a tip. When you write down everything, get ready to throw up. Because all of a sudden, you see how much Chick-fil-A was. I mean, have you ever been, you, you, I, I fed my family of six recently, and I was like, did I buy a Mercedes or something when I got through the Chick-fil-A drive through I mean, like, did we go to, like, you know, Ruth Chris Steakhouse through Chick-fil-A? I mean, how much do nig- nuggets cost, really, to make in regards to that? And so in the context of that, man, when we are thinking and writing down the nuggets, and we are writing down the soda, and we are writing down the Wawa, and we are, I mean, those sizzlies, you know what those sizzlies do? Those sizzlies are calling your name all the time. You're standing in that line. And I mean, someone will go, but it's free coffee Tuesdays. It's only free coffee because when you're on the inside, it's like, come eat me. 
I'm warm and toasty and cuddly when I get on the inside of you. I'm worth 2,000 calories when you're finished done eating me. I mean, the hoagies are cheap and you just get a little extra on the side and a little soup here and a little there and you walk out and then all of a sudden you write down, list your expenses when you write down the nuggets and you write down the waffle fries and you write down the sizzlies and you write down all these different things. All of a sudden there is revelation because I've learned this, information brings revelation. Information brings revelation. Can I just be honest? Sometimes I don't like the information that brings revelation. I don't like what it's telling me, but the, what it's telling me, it's the reality. That's why when we get on a scale, a scale tells you where you're at. Information brings revelation. And so step number two, listing the expenses is critical within our life. Because when we list the expenses, that's not just one book. I, my wife's got another book over here. And in this book, you know, it goes down the line. Hot bagels. Mmm, baby. I love me some hot bagels. Apple is on here too. Groupon is on here too. Dollar Tree. Guess what? Dollar Tree, even though it's only a dollar, adds up. How many of us can say amen to that one over there? Okay. And, and so, I mean, we got haircuts on this. We got oil changes on this. Um, we, we got insurance on this. I mean, we got dining out. We got, we got all these things. Why? Because when we write it down, there is information and there is light that allows us to go, hey, this is something that needs to be paid attention to. Now, on the expense list over here, Right at the top is our generosity to the kingdom of God. God tells us in his word that we've got to bring his first fruits to him. The, the Bible calls it the tithe, 10%. And so right at the top of these pages is the tithe. Right below that is our generosity of how we're engaging in other aspects of building the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's an expense. We are bringing it back to God. Just as God gave us one son, he had a budget of one, we ride our generosity and our giving right at the top. Here's a side note going into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, you know, information brings revelation and writing it down. What I've done times in my life when my eating is out of control, I just write it down. How much are you eating? And all of a sudden, I literally want to throw up after I see 180 calories for one over here. And there's a serving size of two. And so going into Christmas and New Year, maybe just writing down what you're eating is going to bring a revelation of your life. So I want to write down step number one, total income. Number two, list my expenses. Here's number three. This is a game changer. Subtract expenses from income to equal zero. What does that mean? We want every dollar in our budget to have a name. That's why Danielle writes down every single thing over here. Because we want it to have a name. Why? Why do we want it to have a name? Because we are stewards of what God has blessed us with. And I'm not an owner. I am simply stewarding what God has given me. And what I know is if every number has a name and I need to equal zero at the end of the day, there are times that we go past zero. There are times we spend more than we earn. Do you know what that's called? Everyone's like, ah. Can we say that in church? Can we say debt? Yes, we can say debt in church. Because when we spend more than we earn, we go into debt. Yeah, and no one wants debt, but the reality is so many of us are drowning in debt. That's why here at Fusion Church, we offer Financial Peace University, and you can click on it. It's right there in the app, and at the end of the service, I'll give you some practical ways that you can uh, kind of connect with us in regards to Financial Peace University with Dave Ramsey. But when I spend more than I earn, we go into debt. And can I just be honest? We don't live in a great country that is a great model of going into debt, because the way our country deals with it is what? Print some more. What we, uh, we just keep on printing. And the reality and the pain of it is you and I, we're not going to deal with it. But our grandkids are going to deal with the pain of that. And yet the reality is if you and I go on the model of just printing more or swiping more, then we develop a very intimate relationship with an individual named Visa and another friend named MasterCard. And all of a sudden they begin writing you special love notes that arrive on a daily basis at your house. 
And then all of a sudden, I've realized this as I've talked to people, they will get a single digit on your home address wrong so that they will try and shame you by sending a debt collection notice to your neighbor. You know what your neighbor does? This ain't mine. And they walk it over to your house. Hey, you have this debt collection notice that they sent to the wrong address. Well, guess what? Your lover, Visa, and your friend, MasterCard, didn't do it by mistake. They're trying to shame you. And then they figure out that you're not answering the letters, so they start calling you. Hey, baby, how you doing? She wants to spend some time on the phone with you today. And then, then, then you, you stop answering the phone. What do they do? They send you love texts. Hello? Can you call us? And so again, when we subtract expenses from our income, we realize the reality of where we're at. And we can't spend more than we're earning. And step number four is such a game changer because once we write our income and we develop our expenses and we get a zero budget at the end of the day, step number four is this tracking your spending. See, because we can have a good idea and we can have hope, but please write this down if you need to. Hope is not a strategy. Have you ever thought about that? Hope is not a strategy. And so we got to track our spending. Again, very practical things asking for a Benjamin today. Because even if you received a hundred grand in bills, do we have the budget? Do we have the wisdom? Do we have the principles to be able to develop? And, and, and as we spend time talking about tracking our spending, once we create a budget, once we track our spending, we begin to find out where is all of this going? Because there are seasons where the refrigerator will break. That's why Dave Ramsey says you need an emergency fund immediately, $1,000, and eventually three to six months of your emergency fund. Honestly, there are times that we've used that emergency fund, and it saved us from getting into an intimate relationship with my friends Visa and MasterCard or Bank of America or whoever it might be within your life. But what I've realized in tracking the spending is that I'm an emotional being. Brandon, when I'm hungry... I'm hangry, and I want to eat, and I want to take my kids to Red Robin. But Red Robin, again, is a purchase of a house these days. And so we were, were, my wife and I, many, many years ago, we've been married 16 years, but probably in like year four or five, our spending was out of control. And uh, and we we were, can I just be honest, we were very immature in our financial habits uh, about 12 uh, or 11 years ago. And we had gone through Dave Ramsey, and Financial Peace University. And what it recommends is something called the envelope system to track your spending. And so what you do is you literally get just envelopes and you write down on every envelope uh, gas budget for, for our family, you know, maybe $200. Food budget, maybe $600. Um, and this, and write down, and write down restaurant spending. Write down Chick-fil-A, okay? Just because Chick-fil-A is Christian doesn't mean Jesus is gonna keep on giving you money every time you go through it. I mean, not like you get some nuggets and there's dollar bills stuck in the nuggets over there because Jesus is like, oh, it's all right, you're going to Chick-fil-A versus like Wendy's or something. Some of you are like, that's not true. I'm still waiting for the Chick-fil-A money. So the envelope system. And all of a sudden, my wife and I, we would get like three quarters of the way through the month and the envelope was empty. And all of a sudden, it begins to develop discipline within your life. And please hear me. This is a big deal for God because it's based on stewardship. And I would recognize that there are some of us here today in our different locations that you're just still trying to figure out this Jesus thing. And again, I want to say we're for you. We want to help you along the way. There is a larger majority of us that you would go, man, I'm a a mature Christian. I'm a disciple. What I've realized is that if you would sit down and look at this, you would all of a sudden see where my priorities are at. You would go, hey, that's a big deal for them. Oh, that's a big deal for them. Because it's stewardship, not ownership. See, I, I don't own the church. I'm not even in the lead pastor of this church. I don't need that responsibility. I am an under pastor of this church. And I go to God and I say, God, what are you speaking to? 
with finances. My wife and I pray all the time, God, what do you want us to do? Where do you want our spending to be? And, 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 and I'm being honest, we're not always perfect. There are times we drop the ball, but we're always listening. We're always doing our best to obey Him. And again, as I said, I didn't grow up with good financial models. I'm the kid that came to this country 20 years ago with 25 cents to believe and trust that God was doing something supernatural in this country. The book of Psalms 37, verse 4, I close with this. It says, take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. I want to illustrate how important this is for us. There are many times over the last 16 years of marriage to my wife and even before that, that God has asked me to readjust my priorities and my finances. Three years ago, as we were looking at the Diamond Furniture property, which is now Egg Harbor Township location, we entered into a capital stewardship campaign to be able to raise as much money as we could. And there were a lot of wants in my life, a lot of desires, a lot of things. In fact, there was one thing I'd been praying for 25 years about. 25 years been praying for something to get. God had never opened the door for that. And as the diamond furniture began to open up and we began to pray, the number at the top, our tithe, never changed. But then there was our giving to the God is Able Capital Stewardship Fund. Because we truly believe that God was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask us things through the wildest dreams we could ever have, God was able to do. So Danielle and I prayed. We heard from God. Step one, we had our total income. Step two, we wrote down all our expenses. Step three, we adjusted a zero budget. Step four, we tracked our expenses. And what we realized is that our Tajay budget needed to change just a little bit. What we realized is that Brandon needed to bring a little boxed lunch to church on a weekly basis. And our staff can testify to that. He's like, most of the time they'll say, hey, do you want us to get something? And I got my little lunch. Why? Because I realized the whole real quick, that little lunch is a whole lot cheaper than wherever we're going to go eat. Now again, I'm not getting out on anyone. I will eat out at some point. But I had priorities, my family had priorities, and please, please, no guilt, correct? No guilt. But my family had priorities, and for us to achieve those priorities of the kingdom of God, we need to adjust our expenses. We chose to delay a vacation for, for, for our marriage. We chose not to go there. We chose to say no to this. We chose to disconnect the Netflix or whatever you chose. We chose to lower our cable. Because our priority was the kingdom of God. And we were hearing from God. And so as we put on hold these wants, as we matured as Christ followers, God began to direct us in different areas. Well, last year in the month of November, we opened the Egg Harbor Township location on, in September. But in November, uh, our family completed our capital giving commitment to the church. And, and we were out of town and we were literally flying back. We were in Florida. Remember those days when you would travel? That was, feels like a long time ago, correct? We, we were in Florida. We were flying back. And, uh, and God, literally in the week that our capital stewardship commitment ended, literally began to open supernatural doors of desires that my wife and I had had for multiple years. And we had put on hold because we trusted God more. The question that I pose to you at our end of our time together is again, would you trust a hundred grand or would you trust God with the desires of your heart? I want to propose to you that God has come through in my life in more ways than I could ever imagine and in greater ways than I could have imagined. His timing has always been different. His timing has never been perfect in my agenda, but always perfect in His agenda. But what I've learned is I've got to have a budget. What I've learned 
is I got to write down everything that he is blessing as I'm stewarding what he's doing. I'm going to write down all the expenses. And listen, we're still doing it today. And those revelations often want to make me throw up. Or we're able to change and move and massage different areas so that God is able to bless and move within our lives. That was November. And as I stand here, November, a year later, I can truly see how God has opened the most supernatural doors that we could have never imagined on my family's life. And I'm so glad that three, four years ago, that our family chose to trust God in a greater and more blessed way because we have seen His sovereign grace because again, I didn't grow up blessed. I grew up with a lot of pain. I grew up sleeping on the couches of my mom's boyfriend's houses because she would move into anyone's house that was able to give us some shelter. And today, there is a passion and my desire on my heart to say, God, I want to get as many people out of pain and into blessing if we would just trust you ultimately within our life. As we prepare to close here, you might be going, well, that's great, Pastor, with all these things. But here's the reality, correct? Here's the reality. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, we want you in 2021 to connect in Financial Peace University. You can text us at 94000 to Fusion FPU. It's the greatest way that we can help you with those next steps. Also, here's an application. But what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you today about? You might have gone, hey, man, I don't even have a problem with finances, but i got to start counting my calories this week. That's the revelation that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about. But maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about something different. What is that? Number two, would you have a budget date this week? Would you sit down either with yourself and, and have a date with your budget? Would you, if you're married, would you sit down with your spouse and have a budget date? Would you honestly talk about Christmas spending? I think it's something very practical. But could I challenge you to begin to talk about 2021? What is God wanting to do through your life? Through you, yes, you, in 2021. And again, you might be going, I don't have much, but I've learned I can bring a very little and God can use it in supernatural ways. Because again, I was the kid that came with 25 cents in my pocket. What are the kingdom goals that you're praying for in 2021? And then here it is, number three. But where do you need to shine a light on? Come on, let's stand to our feet, all of our locations standing together. Where do you need to shine a light on it? And what I've realized as we close in worship now at our different locations, sometimes just three or four minutes in this worship song is gonna give me revelation. It's gonna give me vision of where I need to shine a light on it. Let me pray for each of us. Father, right now, I pray for a fresh blessing upon our lives, God. I pray that you would give us vision wisdom, understanding. God, give us supernatural breakthrough. And we pray this and we ask this right now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.